Welcome, welcome to the Men of Impact Podcast. It's your boy, LAC. I am happy you're here with me. So, yeah, today uh, we're going to be having some deep dive into some amazing conversation. And I got and I got an amazing brother with me and uh, who needs no introduction. He's a gentle giant, a man of faith, a, a father of three, a husband of one, <laughs> a musician, an artist, uh, an athlete, and newly renowned author. Best selling on Amazon. Make sure y'all go ca- get get a get his book. And here's the book. Make sure you click the link in the description and get the last trumpet. My my my. How you feeling, man? Um. Well, first and foremost, thank you for that uh, <laughs> extremely warm introduction. I got you. Um. I definitely do feel loved. My boy. Um. Just not worthy of all those titles. Um. You're my for, boy. For everybody there, I'm a. Uh, I'm brother Trey. Um, just another sheep in the flock. Um, I like to grow my wool out, so that's why I might stand out a little bit. My wool gets a little thick. Uh-huh. Need the shepherd to come and cut me. A he little runs, more. Than he he runs all the time. He runs away. Um, <laughs> Literally, bro. <laughs> but no, uh, it's a blessing to be on here. Um, Leland, I don't, I don't think I've. No, no. You know what? No, I take that back. Me and Leland have been uh, on online before on a zoom uh yeah, but that, yeah. yeah back in the day so yeah. I, I was i was honored and i was able to to minister and serve alongside him but this is gonna be the it first to my time. family <laughs> this will be the first time um no, no 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 before that brother when is it with the with the leo uh yeah, yeah yeah but i think it was just me and you me and you and a soupy had us on oh yeah so oh, yeah. um Amen. And the Lord used him greatly. He operates Lord in miracles, signs, us. and wonders. This this you know. guy. It's always a competition of who who's the most humble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're fighting for the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Oh. So, uh, but no, look, it's an honor. Um, I'm honored to be here. Um, I love you. And uh, so, yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited. You know, the conversation is going to be crazy, but I think so too. I'm excited. I'm so, excited. so what you guys don't know, we're about to have a an interesting conversation in the the other day we were talking about it. We had a little bit of some time to kind of discuss. <sighs> I don't know if you guys are ready, you know, because this is not I know by the title, you already know what this video is going to be about. But are y'all ready for what we're about to say? And keep in mind, this is fun conversation. Um, we're not going to be fighting each other. And uh, if you ever need somebody to debate, that's him. He's an apologetics guy. And eschatology guy and then I'm, no more, no, I'm, I'm not i'm not that guy okay no more debating i'm Just not demonstrating that guy. that's it no more debating <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but so we want to talk about yeah go ahead brother because <laughs> listen he he pitched this to me right. so when i heard it i was just as surprised as you were <laughs> have you ever heard of the karma sutra yes i've <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of the Kama Sutra. Okay. Uh, do you know what it's about? I know what it's about. I have not studied it. Neither have I. But I've seen, have you seen pictures? Well, that of, would of entail the... studying it. So, no, I have. <laughs> so, you've never seen pictures of the. Not even examined it. Nope. Not even images online? None. Not, so, you have no idea what's in it? No. You don't know what's in it? I, I, I know what's in it. What's in it? <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> Renewal of the covenant position for, for our non-believer friends. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Different sexual positions. Okay. All right. So that's the com- that's the Kama Sutra. Um, I have an honest question. As a, as a, as a married man, should should Christians, you know, use the Kama Sutra if, for example, they have been virgins their whole life, they don't really know much about sex do you think it's it's justified or there's no sin for a christian to participate and use the kama sutra um like what do you think okay so i i guess because you you asked that and i know you're 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 referring to that verse in the book of hebrews that the marriage bed remains undefiled <laughs> um <laughs> we just got into the podcast <laughs> okay all right go and for so it. for the christian man it's not 
that that verse is not referring to uh to a Christian couple can do anything they want. Why not though? In the marriage bed and then it not be undefiled. What it's referring to is that the marriage bed is a clean place because those two are in they are in 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 uh covenant. They're in God's covenant. Mm-hmm. So God has blessed the covenant. Okay. So anything outside of marriage, right? Let's say let's say there's two Christian friends who they fall for each other and one day they're spending too much time and they happen to do the dirty. Right. That bed is defiled because it's rumble not, in the jungle. Yes, they rumble in the jungle. It's it's not it's not something that's clean. Um, it's an unclean act. But the marriage bed remains undefiled because God has blessed the very marriage that the two people are in. I like that. I um, think I think that's I think that's really good. That's a good point. But you still haven't answered the question. The question yeah. is: Should married couples who are Christians, you know, study or use the Kama Sutra as reference to help them in their sex life? Okay, so should, <laughs> my opinion, all right? Because uh-huh. the, the, the should that's where that's where people get a little messy. Should, uh-huh. right? Can you? Sure, you can. You can do anything you want. <laughs> it's so political, bro. I'm not going to recommend it. Why? Why um, not, though? What's wrong with it? Okay. So the Kama Sutra shows many different sex positions, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm sure, because what, what religion is that? The Kama Sutra I is... Hindi. I think it's, uh, it's, it's in the, from India. Okay. Oh, well, or is it Japanese? I don't know. It's one of those two. I don't know. Just make sure you comment and, and, and correct us if, if we're wrong. But whether it's it's Hindu or, or, or Buddhism or, or whatever yeah. uh, Eastern practice, um, I'm, I'm sure they explain, I guess, the energy that's given off and um, the things that may be good for if they believe, you know, in the soul, depending on whatever religion that is. Um, but these are different sex positions. So there would essentially, if we're just looking at the book, for different sex positions, right? Because it's an it's an illustrated book, so you get to see what these positions look like. There's no difference than if me and my wife say, you know what, we want to learn about some more positions. Let's just watch some porn. Okay, hold up. I I see where you're going. Because by the way, I know you you prepared for this. You're bringing up porn. That's, that's, I'm not that's prepared. Not, for that's this. not where I was going. You, you can't just bring up porn because porn is like okay. Because I understand way back when, before porn became something that you can watch on TV, it was first in magazines and cartoons, mm. like drawings. Mm. I get it. But the context is <laughs> using the Kama, the Kama Sutra as a reference guide. You, I, you, what do you mean by that? Like reference guide? Like, so, so are they? No, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just asking where you are. Yeah. So, I, well, I, okay. So then. If I can stray away from the porn, then what the question is, why are you looking at the Kama Sutra? Again, what inside there, like, what are you are you seeking to obtain? This is the thing, you know, you, you we're talking about Christians, right? We're talking about believers. No. Okay. So, OK, so we're talking about Christians. We're talking about believers yeah, the, who are the, married. The ideal Christian couple. Yeah. Are going to be too clean two pure beings who have not been defiled by any other bed. So ideally, what we're talking about are people who have abstained from having sex. People who are virgins, but okay. also people who may have been through a season where their sex life has hit a plateau, you know, or maybe it's going through a valley. How would and they know? How would they know that? How would a, I, how would a, I think, go well, ahead. Well, okay. Yeah. An ideal Christian, an ideal married couple. Uh-huh. All right. And I understand the times that we live in. This is not normal. When we talk about. You know, a man goes through lust and we, and we say, oh, you know, it's it's normal. It's not normal. This is not a normal thing. Lust is not a normal thing. OK, mm. but what we're talking about, an ideal Christian would be two virgins. Right. That come together who have not been defiled by porn mm-hmm. and by fornication, whether it's masturbation. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're talking about two naive people. Right. Who who only know the concept of. Where the the <laughs> hey chill bro I I I want to be I want to be very appropriate PG, PG, yes PG where where the the male genitals goes, the bees 
Yes, to, to produce more kids, right? So we have these two naive man and woman who after they're married, they come together, right? And they consummate the marriage with the very act of sex, right? Right. Yeah. But if these two married couples, mm-hmm. they've not defiled themselves with porn. Yeah. So they have no idea of all these different positions and of all these different things that that can happen or go on yeah. in a marriage bed. Yeah. When they come together and let's say they've been doing it for four years. Well, how would they know that they've come to, I guess, a, a, what we call it? A slump? Yeah, like a like you know maybe a plateau, they, plateau. <laughs> like, you know they need a little bit more spark, you know. Because let's be honest, Trey, we're speaking hypotheticals, mm-hmm. but then again, I'm saying for some people who, you know, missionary is not doing it for them no more, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not doing it for them no more. You know, and it's like, dang, you're always on top, you're always laying on your back. There's there's no. No excitement, no strawberries, no whipped cream, none of these stuff. It's like, should there be, if not the Kama Sutra, should there be something to help believers in sex? Because I don't think we talk about it a lot. And we just say, go with the flow, you know, do what you got to do. But there's some people, I don't want to get too graphic, but they got a micro, you know. And and yeah. So, so why? I think people, is it, it, do you think it's a sin? Do you think it's a sin Mm. in marriage for you to reference sex positions that would potentially possibly increase the excitement in the bedroom? Do I think it's a sin? No. Um, this, th- this is a very tricky question. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very tricky question uh-huh. because on one end, I I want to address those who have not, the naive Christians, the, the naive ones who, who have not been defiled by you know any kind of fornication. They've not seen it and they've not engaged in it. You know, but I understand that in the times that we live in, yeah, that's, you know, it's it's the norm, yeah. you know, and it shouldn't be like that. But I understand. So when I entered marriage, you know, I was still in the world. I, I wasn't saved. And so by that time, my mind was completely corrupt. So I was I was down to try anything. All right. Um, like what? With my wife. <laughs> with my wife only. Like what? Um, like what were you down to try, bro? <laughs> people want to know man people want... <laughs> listen the people want to know uh anything okay. Okay. um anything but, I, I, at that time okay anything um because my mind was already stained from the different things that i've seen not only like in actual porn but also now, I lived a life of fornication, so like with other with other women. So all that stuff came with me into my marriage, you know. And so whenever me and my wife would engage, it's it's not that there was a pla- a plateau. It was more of I remember I've seen this, or I remember I've done this. So let's let's do this, uh-huh. right? So yeah. because I had already had been exposed to that, I brought it into my marriage, you know. But I I, I want to answer this from a, a clean point of view or a clean perspective where someone who has never seen those things, right? Because that's ideally, that's, that's what should be happening. The kids should be raised to fear God, mm-hmm. not to go out and experience all these sexual things and look at these sexually things, sexual things. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So given the fact that we live in the United States of America, mm-hmm. um, it, there's this book called, uh, disciplines of a godly man where the, the author can, like identifies or categorize America as a pornotopia society. A what? A pornotopia society. Oh. <laughs> a pornotopia. Like okay. pornotopia because you can't go anywhere without seeing something pornographic. Whether it's the way a man dresses, a woman dresses, 
commercials. Like you can't see no commercials about Dove soap without a woman with shaved legs going like this. Bro, I, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think that there are naive believers out there in this United States of America that have never seen or experienced something with that re- regards to sexual content? Absolutely. I think that there are. Now hold I, on. I disagree. Now hold on. Hold on. We talking about of age, eighteen and older, even thirteen and up. You want you you know what TikTok does? I understand. Okay, you're asking me. Are like are there? I I absolutely believe that there are people that have that have been so sheltered. Yeah, that have been sheltered from that stuff. As a matter of fact, there's a religion. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. How many of you guys know who the Amish are? Oh. Yeah, no, that they are that is a religion that is so sheltered from the outside world. You can go to an Amish market and you'll see the cash registers and basic electri- electricity, um, which they engage in, but as far as like television, you know, and those things, social media, brother, if you've been to an Amish village, those kids aren't exposed to that stuff. They don't see it. Now, once an Amish person becomes of age, I think it's either 17 or 18, they can actually decide if if they want to go experience the world. And I believe they're given like two years. So, really? Yeah. So and uh, there's actually there was a show. It was called. Um, excuse me. It was called a uh, living Amish. I, I might have that title wrong, but I remember it, they, they would show these where we they, they would have like these teenagers mm-hmm. sick and tired of being Amish. Yeah, taking the two year hiatus, going to be exposed in college, going to do drugs, going to do all those things, and then coming back home. Really? Yes. That's so, crazy. is there? Yes, right. And I know I'm that's that's the most basic answer, the Amish. I know, I know. But there there is right. But I'm even talking to the parents that have children that are coming up like myself. It's our duty to protect our kids and to shield them from these things right and I, we can only do so much yeah right? at my house we don't have cable television we stream yeah i think a lot of people don't nowadays because it's easier and it's cheaper to stream than it is to have cable yeah you know and and but the thing is with streaming comes a lot of other stuff it does you feel me and then you know you have to be vigilant and making sure you're you're you're, you're watching everything that your kids do um which is, which is which is crazy, but my 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 question still remains. You said it's not a sin. You yeah. said it's not a sin for a husband and wife to engage in looking up like a the cam the Kama Sutra to lift up their sex life. It's not a sin to look at the things, right? As if we venture down a little bit further, because again, I don't know what what's inside the Kama Sutra. I don't know if it's I don't either. I, and again, to keep this PG, I don't even think I can at this point. But <laughs> if all the positions yeah. are for you know a man putting it in the vaginal in the in the, in the vaginal route, right? Un- unless all the pictures of that, because I mean, what happens when you get to maybe there's a picture that anal's involved or like oral, like these extracurricular activities? <laughs> then, then I would, I would at that point, I. I I wouldn't call it a sin, but I would, I would say not to engage in those things. Um, Do you think it, if so? If it's not a sin, it's not going to send somebody to hell. Correct. It's like somebody drinking. Then you know, we we go down that route. Is drinking a sin? But does drinking amplify your sex life? Drinking can open up gates. So you're saying that the Kama Sutra can open up gates? Absolutely. So okay, this is okay. I'm just going to bombard you with questions. Perfect. Why do you think it will open up gates? Number one, Mm -hmm. is it because, let me not answer the question for you. Why do you think it would open up gates? Okay. So uh, in the book of Job, Job said, I've made a covenant with my wife. I made a covenant with my eyes that I would only have eyes for my wife. Okay. When you open yourself up to all these other sex positions, right? And let's say you're a naive Christian who's never seen these, these these things, right? It's like looking at porn for the first time. You know, it's easy to see the woman who's in front of you, whether it's on the screen or whether it's your wife. Yeah. But the moment you see the extra things come in, it's it's it begins to get easier 
to see other women in those same things. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it broadens the imagination. Okay. You know? and, and when you have a broadened imagination when it comes to sexual induendo or uh, yeah, uh, innuendos. When, oh, when yeah, when you have that kind of an, an imagination, yeah. I mean, at that point, you know, anything could fit inside there. Your flesh desires to work against the spirit of God. Do you think it's one size fits all? What do you mean? So, for example, you just said that some people would have open doors where, you know, they'll start looking at women the same way. Um, and they'll start having imaginative pictures of how they see the opposite sex. Do you think it's a one size fits all? Do you think some men are just, hey, I really just want to love my wife better. I really just want an opportunity to really amplify our sex life and the only person that matters is my wife and you know we're using this just to you know get into a better place sexually okay so then there there would be so there would be multiple phases uh -huh. it wouldn't just be that one size fits all thing mm -hmm. um but the question is okay well who wants more you know who who is not getting the actual pleasure of what you guys are already engaged in let's say right. it's 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 mutual okay so mutually you guys aren't pleased with each other you guys aren't pleased with what is it the, the size <laughs> well it, <laughs> like I mean, because be because because listen listen yeah let, let, let's be real okay the size isn't going to change with the position right mm. <laughs> mm. i've heard i've heard stories don't ask me why but i've heard of stories where people say certain positions get to a woman's like climax faster than other positions. There's some positions where a woman may not be able to, you know, get there. But then the other I can't positions, believe I'm this is my first <laughs> podcast and, and this is the topic. <laughs> <laughs> hold up. Hold on. Let me let, let me let me actually talk about that. The reason why we're having this conversation is and I'm and I'm happy that we're having this conversation is because when you think about, and I don't want to say the cliche thing, but if Christians don't have these type of conversations, people who are not believers will have this conversation and you're going to get something from them that is not biblical. Now, we're not agreeing. We're just talking and trying to ask questions that y'all might have and see what two believing Christians who are married, let's Put it in context. Trey and I are married and Trey happens to be a father and he's been married a whole lot longer than me. So he has more credibility in this area. And so we're just trying to give you some points as to where believing Christians come from when it deals with this type of topic. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So my question following up that is, OK, let's say that is porn and the pictures suck. But what if it's just descriptive language? So, okay, so um, for those of you guys who know my testimony, I was locked up. Um, Don't let me out. And, yep, and let me out. <laughs> um, hey, real quick, I'm so happy that you're watching this video. If this is blessing you, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can make more content for you. This is the Men of Impact podcast. We're here to impact men. So make sure you like the video, subscribe, and come back for more. Now let's get back into the video. But so I, I was locked up as a juvenile and obviously, you know, with the juvenile, we didn't have access to porn. Yeah. It wasn't there. Yeah. You know, but I do remember that there were very descriptive books. And so if we couldn't get our hands on porn, the next best thing, descriptive books describing what goes on between a man and a woman, an event, the emotions, all that stuff. Now, remember, when you read a book, it again, your imagination is engaged because you don't get to see you're reading words, but you don't get to see frame for frame the picture. Mm -hmm, that's true. But you're reading. Yeah. And in your mind, with the eyes of your understanding, you're you're putting these. Oh, things I like out, I like right? that. The eyes of your under, I like that. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was fire. <laughs> that's trademark. Bible. That's Bible. Trademark. Come on. Um, <laughs> that's Bible. <laughs> but um, you're engaging with that. And so even when it comes to descriptive books, you know, there, there's for me, you know, I, I would encourage or I would tell somebody who, who's looking for advice. Don't look at those things. Don't engage in those things. You know, have eyes for your wife. Learn to love her body. Right. 
don't don't go and and read somebody else's book about how they love this other woman's body because that woman's body is not your wife's body mm-hmm. right that porn that has that other woman that's not your wife's body that's not your wife's emotions mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. learn to love your wife learn her needs and necessities right and if along with that you know yeah. you guys change it up in the bedroom you know it's a natural thing you know um because the emotions are rampant it's very high and you know, you're, you guys are engaged with each other. So if it comes, let it come naturally, you know, but don't don't look for an outside source because then the imagination broadens, you know. Okay. What about so you said don't go out there and read a book to tell you how to love your wife sexually. Mm-hmm. OK, what about songs <laughs> that, you know. Let's say, I don't know, you don't, I know nobody makes love to Hill song. Nobody yes. makes song to. If nobody, you guys do, you're weird. Nobody makes love <laughs> to freaking, uh, what you gonna call it? Who else is out there? Oceans. Bethel. Yeah. Uh, you know. Todd, uh, Todd Dulaney. Yup. You know, CC Winans. Nobody makes love to those songs. No way. It might be questionable. C. So, C. so, so I'm asking if, if it's, don't even give yourself to those books. No descriptive language no pictures and there is nothing else out there tangible that a christian who is in a, in a committed uh monogamous relationship mm-hmm. can go to mm-hmm. what can they go to and should they even listen to like trey song on how he invented sex or you know <laughs> okay and, and marvin gay all right so listen let me let, let me rephrase this, okay? Uh huh. Please um, do. Because right, we're, we're the, the the topic is different sex positions, right? There's there's a difference if you're in a marriage and um, let's say you guys are going through a, t- a troublesome time where you know, whatever could be happening, whether it's financial or whether it's uh maybe the wife is dealing with some internal depression or anxiety or whatever it is, and then it does affect mm-hmm. you guys coming and renewing covenant together. You can read testimonial books about how marriages, you know, were salvaged from ruins, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, bro. That's what I'm calling. You go read testimony. Yeah, no, because look, we look, didn't listen. make it, guys. We lost it. Testimonies, testimony in, in in the Hebrew is just do it again. Right. Yeah. So you read these testimonies and what you're saying over yourself is God do it again. So you read a book about a marriage who it's getting salvaged. It's it's being uh, restored, salvaged from the depths of whatever it's gone through. Yeah. If you're in that same predicament, you know, reading that thing, you're saying, God, do it for me. Do it again. The same way that you say this marriage, do it again. Right. But if we're talking about sex, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you sex alone is not going to save the marriage. So if we keep talking about, you know, a sex, there, there's something going on in the bedroom and, you know, we just want to spice it up. It's a little bit deeper than that. I would say, are you still dating your wife? You know, like, do you still give her the butterflies that you did when you first met? Mm-hmm. Are you going out of your way to do what you did when you first met her? You know, like, mm-hmm. are you telling her she's beautiful? What, are, are you kissing her? You know, are you engaging in the kissing or do you guys just do you, do you bend your wife over and then get it done? We apologize. <laughs> no apologies, right? Yeah. I I, I want to be as straightforward as possible because there are some couples who think that this is it's okay, right? You guys don't. You guys just get straight to the nitty gritty, right? And I mean, look for lack of better lack of a better term, it's just a guy busting a nut and leaving, you know. But in this case, we have a husband and wife. If a husband is doing that, then yeah, they're well. We should probably spice up our sex life because all you're doing is just. <clears throat> it's like you're just getting it over with. Leaves the seed and proceed. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> proceed to get out of there. I think that's a great point, man, about uh, creating a, a, an environment or like a, a atmosphere where your wife feels loved and cherished. And you said kissing her because that's that's true. That's true. I think we as men. We don't need all that, though. You know, we can just speak for yourself, brother. Well, okay, wow. I would say majority of men, because, you know, there's some like Trey. Light skins. You know, they don't need a lot of 
you know, warm up. The engine is always ready. They got <laughs> they got V8s, you know? Listen, hold wait, or wait, wait. V12. That's an issue too. If you have a man who's always horny. How is that an issue? Why is that bad? Huh? Why? Why is that an issue? Okay, well, you Look, know what? Just, I'm just, hey, I'm just asking. I'm not you know saying what? it's wrong or right. I just want to hear I'm your I'm pretty point. sure we'll end up getting there, so just proceed. Go ahead and proceed. Man, I forgot my thought. But, you know, uh, I think what he was saying was so pivotal and so, uh, so good because as men, you know, sometimes I forget the importance of just making my wife feel, you know, like she's all that. You know what I mean? Wow. Like she's all that in a bag of chips. Sometimes I forget. And to your point about do you even date your wife? Because I've learned from my wife that the dating, the, the the subtle touches, not just let me grab your butt kind of touch, let me grab your breast kind of touch, but the the touch on the shoulder, yeah. on the knee, on the on, on or, or kissing her on the cheek. These things to a woman is like little deposits. Wow. It's like, hey. Little deposits. Little deposits of letting you know. <laughs> I want them draws like GTD. <laughs> you know what GTD stands for? G GTD. Got them draws. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting old. I can't keep up with all these. <laughs> no, that was from Martin. Tommy, oh, Martin? Yeah, the episode where where where, where uh, Tommy was being uh, on a he was on the witness stand and and Martin was like, you know, some and then he was like GTD. Martin was like, "What does that mean?" I got them draws. Wasn't a Martin fan. That sucks. Bro. I had I had basic cable channel three <laughs> Seinfeld. Seinfeld is still good, but so. yeah. <laughs> to your point, I think that's 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 something we can take away is the importance of intentionality, right? Yes, that's good. Yeah, but about let's just talk about this real quick. You just talk. You just said it's a wrong for a man to always be horny. Why? Like, I would say get that me hit. Yeah, no, I, I would say that there would be an issue there. If a man is always horny, you know, always needing it and wanting it. Um, I've been married since, wow, 2014. <clears throat> I'm positive there will be concerns, you know, with my, my wife would have some questions if, you know, this far down the line, if I needed it every day, you know, like where I'm saying, hey, I need it. Even when she goes through a cycle, right? Because then what happens for, you know, those women who are going through the cycle for that week? If What if the man's horny? What do you do then? I know you don't stand with this stuff because I already know how you feel. But then people can say, well, there are other ways. You could do your, you could use your hands. Yeah. You yeah. can use fellatio. If all, you don't know what that means, go search it up. extracurricular activities <laughs> um, <clears throat> that mind you, because you know what, I'll just bring it up now. Because oh come, on. no look, listen, all, all right, those let's do it. <laughs> all all those extracurricular activities. I just want you guys to have have an imaginative mind right now. You've never been exposed to any kind of sexuality. When you and your wife come together, all you know is the very basics. This is where that goes. This is how we procreate. Okay. You guys have a very innocent mind. Two innocent people come together. There's never a thought that says, let me put that in my mouth. Or let me put that in the very thing that only things exit out of. Those thoughts don't cross your mind. Everyone who engages in those activities has either witnessed it, seen it, or heard about it. So you want to tell me, for the first person to ever participate in for fellatio, the first, for, okay, for the very the first. first person to ever participate, it, you want to tell me they didn't come up th with that on their own, or they were just people that were so far gone mentally? Okay, what are you trying to say, bro? Okay, so the first people who did it, the question will be, well, who did it? Right? What are all these extracurricular activities? What are they classified in? What is fellatio classified as? What? What is it classified Sodomy. as? That's right. If you Google sodomy, oral sex is classified under sodomy. Well, the question is, what the heck is sodomy? Where do we get that word sodomy from? Well, the base of that word is Sodom. That's right. It's Sodom, which is in the book of Genesis. Okay, chill. <laughs> chill. 
this is his his lane right now. This is his lane, and I know he's gonna go off. Chill, bro. I'm not trying to get you to turn people's mind away from. Because are you saying it's wrong? Yes. Wow. I'm I'm proud that you said that. I'm proud that you said that. I don't feel that way, but I'm proud that you said that. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I I used to feel that way. But then I got convinced by somebody whose name I will not mention. You see? You see? You got convinced. Whose name I will not mention. And then, but then, what if you have a partner mm-hmm. who... Who's they, experienced. <laughs> relax. No. Let's say they're both virgin. Okay. Both virgins. They're both virgins. Are we doing like hypothetical? So like virgin, never been exposed to that stuff? Never. Yeah. Hyp- virgin, just in the fact that they're virgin. They they have possibly heard of it from family members or friends or they know that those things exist, mm-hmm. but they're just virgins. Yeah. Right. Never been with a man. Never been with a woman. Is it wrong if your partner and you're both virgin, mm-hmm. their way of expressing their love for t- to you is to perform fellatio on you? That's their way of expressing yeah, they love that, and giving it to you makes them feel good. There's going to be a lot of questions. For, <laughs> first and foremost, if my significant other says, this is how I show you that I love you, there's going to be a lot of questions there. You know, what, what, <laughs> why do you think that that expresses love to me? You know, in a, in a very basic term, it's uh, love language, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody's love language is receiving gifts yeah. from another person. Well, if if your way of showing me love is sh- is, is is giving me gifts, mm-hmm. and I say, well, that's not that's not really my way of of knowing that you love me, mm-hmm. right? That's one sided. So when you show me love, mm-hmm. that's your the thing is like in communication. Hold the up. wife is saying, this is my way of showing you love. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, unless the other person is saying, well, hey, you know, yeah, now I know that you love me because you're doing this. Okay, okay, you know, unless that's happening, I. I wouldn't even accept that excuse. Aren't husbands supposed to uh, love their wives and wives are supposed to respect and honor their husbands and we're to serve one another because, you know, we're basically no one is greater than the other. Right. Mm -hmm. So. What if that's her way of serving and you as a husband, you you can't necessarily not saying you can't. But you're learning how to not deny her if, oh, she enjoys doing this. Let me. And what if she's somebody that wants it done to them, to her? And it makes her feel, you know, very stimulated. And it's one of those things where she can't go without. How, How do you reconcile that, given the fact that we're supposed to not deny each other each and his body yeah and, and that's where we <clears throat> learn about each other you know yeah. what's wrong with that well yeah so that verse again taking out of context we're, we're we're all that's referring to somebody who is withholding sex from their partner you know and that could be as means as a punishment or um in a sense of a reward system um but you shouldn't do that right but what let's say I think there, there's always a deeper connotation. Uh-huh. Like if if a wife is sitting there saying, um, you know, this is how I want to show you love. Right? I think there's a deeper connotation that maybe should be addressed. Like, hey, like why, why do you feel like you need to do that for me to know that you love me? You know, it's, it's, it's almost like if, if a wife says, um, cause there's, there's multiple things that, that take place in a bedroom, but like one of them, um, could be like shaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't. There's a term for that, but um, <clears throat> what BDSM? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, there's some people like like getting shamed. Yeah, you know, and like being talked down to, and yeah. like they they love that feeling, yeah. right? Well, the question is, hey, like, why is it that you love that? You know what? What about that do you love? You know why? Why does it make you feel like you're wanted if if you do that thing or if you receive that thing? No. You know? Okay. I think I think there should be more communication, you know, not just mm-hmm. the action and then me just sitting down and accepting it. There should mm-hmm. be a little bit more communication. I'll I'll try to expound a little bit more. Um, 
but there there should be communication. Like there there should be a healthy dialect between husband and wife. Mm-hmm. You know, if if my wife is, let's say I you know it's our very first time or you know our first couple times, and you know I see something that maybe I'm not used to or like um, maybe I wasn't expecting. My first question is, hey, like why are you doing this? You know, or it, it doesn't have to be as you know straightforward and be like, hey, babe, mm-hmm. like. Why do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, not Mm -hmm. not that it's bad. I'm just like, why why do you do it? Yeah. You know, but I think there should be a communication line. That way we can get to the root of the issue. Mm -hmm. Right. If if there is an issue. Okay. Um, I I do feel like when it comes to the extracurricular activity. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to keep calling it that. All right. Yeah. Because I mean, that, 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 that engulfs everything outside of regular sex where the penis goes into a vagina. So when it comes to regular sex, you're defining regular sex as penis and vagina. And you're also saying anything that is not requiring a penis and a vagina is a sin. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. A hand job a sin? Not necessarily sin. Remember, I'm saying that the imagination becomes broad. But you said it's a sin. I'm saying, no, no, no. It can can be a gateway. So So um, it's not sin. It's not necessarily sin. This is not something you're going to go to hell for. This is not something that okay. you necessarily need to repent for. Okay. Right? But I believe, okay, so if we're talking about a hand job, you get a hand job. Well, if my wife gives me a hand job, right, and, you know, I, I like that. It's just the hand. What's the difference between her hand and my hand? Would it be okay then? Like, let's say my wife is on a business trip. I really need it. You know, we've already come to an agreement. I mean, she gives me hand jobs, so... Why not me just give myself a hand job? No, because you're you're sinning against your own body. Are you? Yes, you are. So so would masturbating in front of your wife, like maybe that's something that you two like, would that be okay or is it sinning against your own body? That's a great question. If that's something that y'all two like, and that's where it comes back to you said the the the, the scripture is taken out of context, but that's where it comes back to if it's you and your partner, mm-hmm. right, doing something that you both enjoy. For example, I'm not into strangulation or BDSM, like you said, and being hung or whatever. But if if you're into stuff like that, being told you're a little boy and smacked. Yes. Who am I to tell you that you need deliverance? Maybe you do, right? But who am I to tell you that what you're doing is... is if a man, if it, if you, you know first what? met me you and I what? said, you know what, brother, I don't like hugs. I want you to smack me in my face. That's the kind of love I need. You wouldn't sit there and say, this is like, this is a little weird. This is a little awkward. I would say it's awkward. Okay, I would so, say it's weird. So then if you and your wife, but I'll slap the first you. Time, if you and your wife for the first time, uh-huh. you guys start doing things that maybe you've never even seen on TV. Uh huh. You've not witnessed it. You're very naive. Yeah. Start doing it. This should the question would come up like, what is this and why? But to your point, did we have a communication? Like, did we talk about it? That's boom. That's, so, so, so there has to be a communication. So, yeah. So I think if they talked about it and it's kind of like, okay, we're going to go down this route. For some people who are watching, they're probably going to say, dang, this guy, Trey, is making me feel like me participating in fellatio and extracurricular activity, extracurricular activities is bad it's it makes it appears like i'm leaving the natural way and going for the unnatural way that's what you're saying according to romans and you're making me feel like i'm one of those people and that's not true guys that's not he's just very passionate he he, he's just very passionate about that topic because he's saved now and he he don't do it no more i don't i don't so he used if, to do it though. If I could maybe bring it back like full circle, you know, because I don't want you guys to sit here and be like, man, this guy became a, a Bible thumper and a Jesus freak and oh, he's just he's just holiness all over. I, I, I want to give you guys maybe a bigger picture. Um because it takes time, you know, it it, it takes time to grow and to to mature um as a believer. And I'm still doing both of those things. But we're made in the image and in the likeness of God, right? Mm-hmm. marriage is the very pattern of what God was doing mm-hmm. before creation. Oh boy. Yeah, we have one of the very questions that I had as a young believer, what the heck was God doing before he created before the angels, before man, right? 
I'll give you the answer. He was in consistent fellowship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All of them. Fellowshipping. Consistent, intimate fellowship. Right? And not in the idea of, you know, how us humans are intimate. But now watch this. You fast forward. Angels are created. The world is created. Humans are created. Am I taking too long? No, no, no. Um, humans are created. And then now marriage is 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 instituted by God with Adam and Eve, right? God created. He gave life. He procreated life. And not just that. God is eternal. <clears throat> yeah. Man, mm-hmm. in his very essence, is also eternal. Inside of your very flesh that decays is what we know as a soul. Yeah. Your soul cannot die. So even though this flesh dies, your soul does not die. So God gave way to an eternal being, right? So you're not God. You're not God, but just like God, you are eternal. Yeah. Right? So God does this. He procreates, and then he blesses man and woman with the same ability to procreate. How? Sex. A woman and a man come together, and they give birth to another eternal soul. So in the very image and likeness of God, we are patterned after that ability. Sex is, at its very core, a shadow of the intimacy. It's two people coming together in agreement, saying, "It's beautiful." yes, life must continue. Life goes on, right? All the extracurricular activity, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that God, when you see God, God's going to be like, how dare you, right? My only image is like when you guys are doing it, you know, like it's God up in heaven. Like, man, that's my, that's my son. <laughs> that's my daughter. <laughs> oh my God, bro. But that's funny. What, 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 I, what I will say is all those extra things that come on with it, um, I think it's just, it's just a, uh, a commodity for the flesh. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, more of a gratification for the flesh, you know, lust uncontrolled can lead to some very disturbing things. It's true. Very you know? true. Very true. And so, go down to the world of bestiality and more. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, the first person that ever did it was, you know, like they they didn't just come up with it on their own. I'm yeah. not saying that it, it very well could have happened. And in fact, it probably did. Right. But I also believe that that is what we call lust uncontrolled because again if you have two sheltered people if if we do an experiment with two sheltered people yeah who don't get to see everything that we see this generation and ugh, the next generation is going to see right my odds would probably say that they wouldn't participate in those extracurricular activities that wouldn't come to their mind it would only be this is i know where this goes mm-hmm. and i know what it does it makes more more kids it makes more life all right. Well, you know, listen, I want to say something because I think you just dropped the mic, but this will be another topic because the honest question is you just said sex is for the sanctity of showing that a life continues. God instituted that for fellowship. Let me ask a question, bro. <laughs> what about people who use condoms mm. and people who use B.C.? Because a man was killed in the Old Testament for, for pulling despair. out. Yep. And what about dudes who pull out who are married? You don't got to talk about it, but I'm just saying that's going to be another conversation with this brother here because then we have a whole another hit problem. Wait, why? Did... A whole another. You want to answer it? No. Why? Why do I got to be in that? Day? <laughs> Why? Why do all the podcasts I'm on have to pertain to this? Because I feel like you know his expertise is the end times. His expertise is um, biblical prophecy. He's really great at interpreting scripture. God has given him a gift, but I feel like these kind of conversations are also fun, and yeah. yet they can be enlightening. Is that how you pronounce the word? Enlightening. Enlightening. And so enlightening. we we need it. I mean, so guys, let me know, man. This is a. Uh, uh, any final thoughts you want to say to the people? Um, you want to rebuke them? No, no. Uh, by all means, uh, I'm not keep doing what you're doing. You know, hey, make God <laughs> make God proud. 
<laughs> Make them proud. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. Listen, if you like this, please share, comment, and subscribe. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one.